their parents either alcoholics or drug addicts. Mm. So, so they're not able to take care of their they're children? They're not able to take care of their children. They're not interested in their children. Oh, really? uh, yeah. There is one boy mm -hmm. um, in this group. Uh, he was three months old when his mother brought him to this orphanage. She, she didn't want and him? And then or? she disappeared. Uh, she didn't want him. He's eight years old now. Mm -hmm. So he spent eight years of his life in this orphanage. Mm -hmm. It is here from the Soviet time. Yes. So they work today, but it's a nightmare. If something breaks, it's a disaster. Because the 450 people depend on this kitchen. Mijn reis begint in de Oekraïnse hoofdstad Kiev. Ik neem de nachttrein naar Odessa, een kustplaats aan de Zwarte Zee. Onderweg passeren we vele Oekraïnse dorpjes. Veel van deze dorpjes hebben eigen massagraven, aandenkens aan de Holocaust 75 jaar geleden waar hele Joodse gemeenschappen zijn vermoord. Een open wond. Het is nog donker als de trein meer dan tien uur later in Odessa aankomt. Op het perron ontmoet ik Alina en Igor. Zij zijn onderdeel van het team van Christen voor Israël in Oekraïne, die zich al vele jaren inzet voor de Joodse gemeenschappen in het land. Daar waar voor de Tweede Wereldoorlog nog ettelijke miljoenen Joden in Oekraïne woonden, zijn dat er nu nog maar een paar honderdduizend. Hun leefsituaties zijn vaak schrijnend. De Joodse ouderen zijn eenzaam en wonen in diepe armoede. Maar ook vele Joodse kinderen hebben het niet gemakkelijk. Daarom reis ik met Alina en onze chauffeur Igor langs verschillende gemeenschappen om te zien hoe Christen voor Israël ze helpt, maar ook om te zien wat er nog nodig is. Odessa. De Joodse gemeenschap telt hier minder dan 15.000 zielen. In de oorlog werden er 100.000 Joden vermoord of stierven van honger en kou. We rijden naar een kindertehuis, Tikva. So Alina, what is this place that you brought me to? Uh, this is uh, the Jewish orphanage uh, and it's part of the Jewish community of Odessa. Yeah. Uh, we support this orphanage. It has 28 children of different age from birth to eight years old. Uh -huh. And we're going to visit them uh, this morning and uh, see what they, how Meet their day them. begins. Okay, that's yeah. nice. Good. De opnames van deze documentaire hebben we gemaakt vlak voordat ook Oekraïne werd getroffen door het coronavirus en vlak voordat alle hygiënemaatregelen van kracht werden. Hallo. 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 Hallo.
Дима? Дима. О, Дима. Дима, did you sleep well? Дима, ты спал хорошо? Did you bring gifts? He's asking. <laughs> I say we are gifts ourselves. Привет. Привет. Oh. Тебя как зовут? Эй, hey, hello. Дима. Как зовут тебя? А вот и Дима. What is his name? Как тебя зовут? Стасик. Стасик? Натик. 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 Сара. А это Сара. Сара. Девочка. Да? Да? Алло. Как вас много. Алло. Там они с нами. А? И Nadat de kinderen zijn opgestaan, is het tijd om te ontbijten. Alina, can you tell me a little bit about the background of these children? Um, all the, these children come from the socially insecure families, mm. so their parents either alcoholics or drug addicts. Mm. So, so they're not um, able to take care of their they're children? They're not able to take care of their children, they're not interested in their children. Oh, really? uh, yeah. There is one boy mm -hmm. um, in this group, uh, he was three months old when his mother brought him to this orphanage. She, she didn't want and him? And then she or? disappeared. Uh. She didn't want him. He's eight years old now. Mm -hmm. So he spent eight years of his life in this orphanage. The children are really from very sad backgrounds, huh? Very sad backgrounds mm -hmm. and uh, obviously so their families uh, are not safe place mm -hmm. uh, for these children to grow mm -hmm. up. So how is uh, Tikva, the orphanage, giving uh, back a smile on these children's faces? You know, children are children. They're, they're happy no mm -hmm. matter what. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the workers of this orphanage, they do all their best yeah. to keep these children happy, to give them happy childhood, to provide everything for them. So actually they're like the mothers and fathers of They're mothers and fathers and grandmothers. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure these children don't lack anything in this orphanage mm -hmm. except for the parents' love. Tikva bestaat al meer dan 20 jaar. Vele kinderen hebben hier gewoond. Vera is 18 en studeert inmiddels. Ze was twee toen ze hier kwam en is vandaag op bezoek. You grew up in uh, Tikva, yes? Yes. yes. From two years old I came to here and uh, here like uh, I have so many memories. Yeah. From here and I'm so happy that I'm in Tikva. You have uh, good memories of this yes. time? Yeah. It like it was so good and I was have anything what I need yes. and yeah it was so nice. Was it hard for you that, that you weren't able to live at home that you had to live here? Um, I don't know. have a mother she died when I was five years old oh, I'm so sorry, and yeah. I don't remember her mm -hmm. and my father I don't know where he maybe he died I don't mm -hmm. know and that's all. My so grandma, your grandmother that's your family? She's actually. sick I'm I'm so sad for her yeah. and I want to come visit her. If Tikva wouldn't have been there for you, what, what would have happened with you? If not Tikva, I, I'm, it's not my life. It's like, no, no, really? no. Wow. Like, I'm, Tikva helping me so much. Yeah. With everything I need, they help. Het werk van Tikva is onmisbaar. Ieder kind heeft zijn eigen verhaal en liefdevolle zorg is keihard nodig. Helemaal voor deze kinderen die de warmte van een gezin missen. Onderdeel van Tikva zijn ook een jongenshuis en een meisjeshuis. Voor de voedselvoorziening zijn ze afhankelijk van een centrale keuken. De keuken is gevestigd in de Joodse school. Op scholen in Oekraïne is het gebruikelijk dat kinderen ontbijt, middag eten en een vier uurtje krijgen. Het eten dat hier bereid wordt is een enorme hulp voor veel ouders die nauwelijks genoeg geld hebben om hun rekeningen te betalen. Laat staan om elke dag een gezonde, voedzame maaltijd op tafel te krijgen voor hun gezin. 
En daarnaast worden er ook vele ouderen geholpen vanuit deze keuken. Daarom is de keuken van de Joodse school zo cruciaal voor de hele gemeenschap. Ik mag meehelpen om voor vandaag het eten klaar te maken in de keuken. Voor 450 mensen. Hallo. Hi Sarah. Privet. Good to see you. Hi. Arashka. How are you? Welcome. How are you? Good to find. Ready to work? Of course I am. Yeah. This is the reason why I'm here. We need your help, Sarah. Yes. I can take your coat. Okay. Ja. It's a lot of work here. Yeah, there's a lot of things going yeah. on. Sarah? So what do you want me to do? Mix. 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 She trusts you with the carrots. This is carrots. Carrots. Mm. Natasha? Yeah, yeah. What, what are we making today? What are we making today? Soup. Soup? soup. This is uh, soup? soup. And what else? Yeah. Prepare soup karcho. Yeah. <coughs> it will go there. And what else and are we making? And what else are we making today? Kasha Grishneva. Uh, buckwheat. Uh -huh. And... Uh, chicken. 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 Okay. It sounds chicken good. Sauce. With sauce. Nice. Natasha, we have all the stuff we have here. Yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah, half of it. Uh -huh. And then another half will come later. Nice. Is this as well? Here you are. Hey, and how does it make you feel that you are helping these children from from difficult backgrounds sometimes? Как в нашем женском коллективе стараемся как мамы и приготовить что-то вкусное, необычное, чтобы были все довольны. Mainly women work in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. That's why we are as mothers for these children. Every yeah. time we cook for them, yeah. we think uh, uh, of these children of uh, as of our own. Wow. Yeah. And a lot of these children, they don't have homes where they can go to and they, if, even if they have a home, their parents cannot give them proper food, but you give it to them. We know that, that's why we do all our best for these children to feel loved yeah. and they're taken care of. Wat een toewijding. De keuken is goed georganiseerd en het team een geoliede machine. Maar toch is er een fix probleem. Daarover later meer. Op een ander moment gaan Alina en ik naar het jongenshuis. Christen voor Israël deelt ook maandelijks voedselpakketten uit aan Joodse ouderen van wie vele Holocaust overlevenden zijn. Ik heb de jongens van het jongenshuis gevraagd om te helpen bij het inpakken van een aantal pakketten die we gaan uitdelen. What are your names? What is your name? Rafael. Rafael en you? Jonathan. You? Jonathan. Leon. Leon? Leon. Oké. Okay. We want to pack 50 food parcels here and we are going to bring them to elderly Jewish people who are uh, poor and who really need help. So I'm very happy you are all here to help us. So first we're going to unload everything from the truck and we're going to put it there on the tables, all the ingredients. After that we have bags and we put from each ingredient we put one thing in the bag, okay? Okay, okay very good. Deze jongen die gaat uh, zo meteen met ons uh, mee op bezoek bij de oudere mensen die wij helpen met de voedselpakketten. But you are living here in Tikva, in the boys home. I live in this two years. Two years? Yes. How is it here? You like it? Good, yes, I yeah? like it. But it's not possible for you to live at home, at your parents' home? No? No. You have been living in Tikva since uh, when? When did you arrive in Tikvi? 13 years ago. 13 years ago. 13 years ago. And how old are you now? And how old are you now? 14. 14. 14. So when you were one, you came to live here? Yes, you were one year. So why did you come to live here? And why didn't you live at your parents' home? For what reason did you arrive in Tikvi? Why didn't you live with your family? I don't know. Het gebeurt gewoon. Zo gebeurt het, toch? Ja, ja. Veel van de jongeren hebben geen idee van hun verleden of hun oorsprong. En als ze het wel weten, is het niet gemakkelijk om over hun familie te praten. Datzelfde merk ik ook bij twee meisjes die vandaag meehelpen in de keuken. 
Hallo. Hi, I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nastya, you are living here since uh, what age? A year, one year. Since you were one year old. And can you tell me about your family situation? Where you come from? But I don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. You don't have memories? Have, but not a lot. Not a lot. What kind of memories do you have? Good. Good? Memories. Yeah. You remember your parents? Just mother. Just your mother. Can you tell me about your home situation? I don't remember. You don't remember. So what about what about Tikva? Because you have been here almost all of your life. No, а если вот говорить про Тикву, вы здесь прожили практически все время. How is Tikva? И что вы можете сказать про эту школу? It's our home. Yeah. Yes. Why? Почему? Because we don't know how to live at uh, in another seat and uh, mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have to think about if Tikva would not be there, what would happen with you? А если бы вот не было Тиквы, давайте представим, и что было бы тогда в вашей жизни? Конец света. Would be the end of the world for us. Really? Why? Why? Почему? Не знаю. I don't know. What do you think? А ты как думаешь, Настя? Ты как себе представляешь свою жизнь без тиквы? Нет. I cannot imagine my life uh, uh, without тиква. No. Hey, and we are here in the kitchen where uh, all these ladies are making a meal for you every day. Ну, мы сегодня what do you вот think about that? на кухне, где столько много поваров стараются, работают для вас. Как, что вы думаете? They cook a delish, very delicious food, and we're very grateful to yeah. them. And we love to eat what they cook for us. I see you crying. Почему тебе вот трудно говорить о том, о чем мы сейчас тебя спрашиваем? Тяжело вспоминать. Because it's very hard to remember mm -hmm. and to think about yeah. my life. Thank you. You wanted to share with us. Спасибо, что вы ответили наши вопросы, рассказали мне немножко. I think it's very courageous of you. You want to do this. Вы очень храбрые девочки, потому что набрались смелости и ответили наши вопросы. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dit is het verhaal van Nastia en Alina maar ook van de kinderen en van de jongens in het weeshuis van Tikva. Ondertussen zijn alle voedselpakketten ingepakt en ik ga met de jongens van het jongenshuis naar een van de oudste Joodse inwoners van Odessa. Hij was negen toen de oorlog begon. Dankjewel. Здравствуйте. Это Сара. Да. Сара. Сара. Nice to meet you. Это наша молодежь. Проходите, молодежь. Мужчины есть, да? Проходите. You can go in here? Да, я. Yeah. You can sit wherever you want. So, Григорий, we brought a little present for you. Uh, Григорий Семенович, мы привезли вам небольшой подарок. And he's going to give it. И вот наш помощник вам сейчас его вручит. Он тяжелый. It's heavy. О, да. Тяжелый, но приятно. It's heavy, but very pleasant. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what this is? А вы знаете, что там? Понятия не имею. Have no idea. Ну, oh, let's open it. Давайте откроем, посмотрим. Давай. Нам yeah? самим let's интересно. Давайте поставим. Присаживайтесь, присаживайтесь. Может, вот сюда мы... Уехал в Канаду. Так, смотрим. It's like a Santa Claus who came. Нужно. Обязательно. Нужно. Да. А, горошек. Вообще... Кукуруза. Григорий, oh, okay. we brought you this uh, food parcel. Uh, can you tell me how necessary it is for you to get this extra help? 
за квартиру платить и все это. Поэтому это очень важно и очень приятно. This food parcel is very important, and uh, more than that, it's uh, such a big joy that somebody cares, because uh, I have the only income I have is the retirement payment, and it's very mm -hmm. small. It's a little bit more than the, the retirement payment of others, but still, it's not easy to make both ends meet. Mm -hmm. That's why this food parcel is very important and very pleasant. We brought the four boys here because we think it is important for them to learn from you, because you are 88 years old. You have lived through the war and um, we think it's important to educate them about what happened during the, the Holocaust. In the beginning of September, that is, we were here for a few months here, and there were bombs and everything. As you know, the war began in uh, June of 1941 uh, in the Soviet Union and uh, we were evacuated only in September. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the first three months we, s we stayed in Odessa and uh, we saw a lot of fights, fierceful fights, bombings, and we experienced all of that. Mm -hmm. And then we went uh, into evacuation and um, uh, uh, till 1943 we starved. Mm -hmm. There was nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even find uh, crumbs mm -hmm. to about, eat. About the time that you were in Odessa, um, what is your strongest memory of the World War? Потом через месяц после начала войны Одесса вся горела. Бросили зажигательные бомбы, и Одесса вся была в пожаре. Mm -hmm. I remember bombings and uh, to um, uh, stay safe, mm -hmm. uh, our mother would bring us into the basement uh, of the uh, building that was in our neighborhood and we stayed there for hours, then we would come back again in, uh, to our house, then would go back into the basement. Then I remember uh, there were fi uh, big fires uh, all over Odessa mm -hmm. uh, because of the bombings, a lot of uh, houses were uh, put on fires. And was there also persecution of Jewish people? А скажите, были преследования вот именно по национальному признаку, как евреи? В основном это было во время войны уже. For the first three months uh, we didn't experience here uh, persecution uh, because of, uh, we were Jews, uh, but uh, when we went into evacuation there uh, we were called different names, we were called uh, Jodi, which is the offensive way to call a Jewish person. Uh, dirty Jews came, so we were really humiliated and persecuted there. The herinnering aan de oorlog blijft altijd levend. Wat is het dan bijzonder om te zien hoe Christen voor Israël ook deze oude mensen helpt om het hoofd boven water te houden? Niet daai Bog, dat er was een oorlog. Niet daai Bog. Als het nu een oorlog wordt, is het alle mensen. Terug naar de keuken. De keuken is brandschoon, het team werkt efficiënt en de apparatuur oogt netjes. Maar niet alles is zoals het lijkt. There is also a problem eh, with this kitchen. Definitely, because they cook every day for 150 meals. There are still uh, a lot of problems here. Mm. And uh, um, it's cultural, people don't complain. Mm -hmm. So they don't complain, something is not working, something is broken. They try to work with what they have. Yeah. That's why um, uh, people who work here are happy they don't complain. But we know that there are things that can be replaced and fixed. Mm. For instance, the steaming part of this uh, uh, equipment is not working. That's why instead of uh, steaming uh, mm -hmm. food, mm -hmm. it's fried, it's which fried. is not good. You know? So what does it, what does it mean? It, it gets drier because it's it, not It steamy? gets drier, it gets harder uh, to chew for elderly people because they also cook for elderly people. Mm -hmm. It's not good for children because sometimes uh, for the children's diet, they have to steam meat mm -hmm. instead of fry and make it hard. That's why it's good if the steaming system is working here. The ventilation system is the essential part uh, mm -hmm. in every uh, kitchen that cooks for 450 people, yeah. you know. And if it's uh, working, it makes so much noise that yeah. you can hardly hear yourself breathing. Ik zal het even laten horen. Let's try. Let's try. We hebben hem nu namelijk even uitgezet. Maar. Oh, yeah. See, I'm yeah. telling you, 
it's terrible. It's yeah. making so much noise and it's not working properly. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's uh, because it's not prop uh, working properly, a lot of condensation uh, collects here. The ceiling gets wet, the stucco peels off, the walls are wet, and they cannot open the windows because of the uh, kosher rules. Dust, uh, bugs, yeah. uh, they whatever. So they cannot open the windows to yeah. let the air come in. That's why um, uh, ventilation system is very important right. here, the proper ventilation uh -huh. system. So, and uh, this equipment, what well, is... Well, uh, this equipment, I know that it, uh, uh, it is here from the Soviet times. Yes. So the Soviet Union, you know, fell apart uh, in 1991 and it was here even before that. Yeah. So you can tell it's old and it's... Uh, it's working, but maybe yeah. tomorrow it will finish. You never know, maybe even today. Yeah. You know? yeah. De meeste apparaten in de keuken werken niet meer naar behoren of zijn zo oud dat ze het elk moment kunnen begeven, terwijl er zoveel mensen van afhankelijk zijn. Een van de ouderen die afhankelijk is van de voedselhulp van Christen voor Israël is Paulina. De oorlog heeft ook haar leven getekend. And they all want to visit you. They have to come in. Paulina, it's very nice to be here to be your guest. Paulina, we are very happy that we could come to you with Kosti. Mm. I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Mm. And you know, we brought something for you. We brought a food parcel. Вы уже заметили, что мы вам принесли посылку удовольствия. Because we want to help you and we want to help a lot of other Jewish people in Ukraine. But we also would like to learn from you because you were born during the war and you are one of the people who, who lived in this time. My brother and I were born in uh, evacuation where my mother uh, went when the war began. But unfortunately last year my brother passed away. Mm. Uh, we lived together, but uh, now I am by myself. Mm. Al snel gaat het over de oorlog. Paulina vertelt over haar overleden man die de gevolgen van de oorlog zijn hele leven bij zich droeg. When the war began, uh, my husband, uh, as the rest of the Jewish population of Odessa, mm. uh, were brought uh, to one place in uh, Odessa. And uh, from there, they were brought to ghetto. Though in the beginning, people thought they would be uh, taken to a safe place. Mm. И начали забор его передала, и так он остался жить. He was brought to ghetto together with his mother, but uh, his mother agreed with the father that he would come to the fence of the ghetto mm -hmm. and she would pass to him their son. To and let him escape, yes, actually, yes. yes. Yeah. And this is what happened. The father came to the gates, uh, to the fence of the ghetto, mm -hmm. and uh, his uh, mother uh, gave the boy into the hands of the father mm. and this is how he survived. After a while, after the war, uh, I met my future husband and um, we found out that he was uh, ill. Mm. He was mentally ill. Uh, it was, uh, at some point it became very dangerous to live with him because uh, his mental yeah. disability was very severe. Ему такой еще укол делали, чтобы не было поколения. Uh, because uh, as a child he was in ghetto and he was uh, uh, given a special shot. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of this shot he couldn't have children after the war. Yeah. And of course he lived through such uh, horror. So it's horror. also a trauma that uh, maybe he developed. Was he thinking a lot about what he lived through? Нервы да нервы, а я терпела, терпела, а потом мы разошлись. Uh, very often he would uh, talk about the war, mm. he would remember what he lived through. And, um, but uh, year after year it became more and more difficult to live with a mm. person like that mm. who was very stressed and depressed mm. and then this uh, uh, mental uh, disability developed uh, and at some point uh, we decided we could not live together anymore. Mm. Okay. And oh, we divorced. So sad, yeah. 
Vaak komt Christenen voor Israël met vrijwilligers uit Nederland, België en Duitsland. Die bezoekjes zijn belangrijk omdat de ouderen dan beseffen dat ze niet alleen zijn, dat ze niet vergeten worden. Dat is net zo belangrijk als de voedselhulp die we ze geven. En vandaag hebben we de jongens van Tikva meegenomen. We merken hoe belangrijk dat is voor Polina. And we brought four young people with us. Do you have a special message for them? Because you have a lot of experience, you had a long life. Do you have a message for them? What they can learn from you? Я вам могу пожелать самого хорошего. Вы молодые, что у вас жизнь впереди. Вот. I would like to wish you all the best. You have to believe uh, in everything good and better. And please uh, love, respect and take care of your parents. Mm. Mm -hmm. And do you have a message for Polina also? А ребята, вот, а вы что можете сказать Полине? Я скажу то, что жизнь у вас, конечно, непростая, но у вас достаточно сил, чтобы это все преодолеть. I know that uh, your life uh, you. was very difficult and it mm. is still difficult, but you are a strong woman. Mm. You have enough uh, capacity to overcome uh, all the problems. We understand that you had a, a difficult life. Uh, what does the food parcels mean for you? Imagine that you don't have them. What would happen? The only income I have is my retirement payment. And mm. it's uh, uh, 2,000 grivna per month. It's impossible to live having this money. I was a master И в ателье мод я работала, вот, и сама создавала такие модели, еще демонстрировала модели, mm -hmm. я показывала фотографии. Mm -hmm. I worked all my life, uh, every single day, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought I would uh, have uh, enough uh, mm -hmm. uh, money to live on when I get older, but unfortunately I can hardly make both ends meet. Mm -hmm. Onvoorstelbaar als je al die verhalen hoort, maar ook de armoede waar deze mensen in leven. En Paulina vertelde ook dat ze een pensioentje heeft van 2000 grivna per maand. En dat is de Oekraïnse munt en dat is ongeveer 74, 75 euro. En als je realiseert dat ze de helft daarvan al kwijt is aan elektra en licht en gas. Dus, dus dan heeft ze nog 37 euro over. En daar moet ze eigenlijk alles van betalen. Ze is diabetes patiënt. Dus ze moet medicijnen kopen die ze eigenlijk helemaal niet kan betalen, want die zijn al 75 euro per maand. En daarnaast moet ze ook eten kopen en ook dat is niet genoeg. Dat is ook de reden dat Family 7 in actie komt om mensen zoals Palina en veel andere Joodse Holocaust overlevenden te helpen met voedselpakketten. So what is happening here? Sarah? So this uh, fantastic device mm -hmm. is called a potato peeler. Yes. So when you peel potatoes at home, you take the knife and do it carefully. But here, for 450 people, you put potatoes in this thing. And uh, uh, um, the idea is that uh, it peels... Uh, it saves work. It saves That's work, idea, you yeah. know, potatoes. But it doesn't work properly. And after this machine peels potatoes, somebody sits for several hours trying to fix the work of the machine. Uh, See? So it's not done in a proper way. Actually. It's time no. consuming efforts and yeah. everything. Every day so again. every day carrots and potatoes. Yeah. Uh, the cooking uh, plates. Yeah. Uh, uh, they are also 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So they work today, but uh, if something breaks uh, no chances to replace the br uh, broken the parts. parts okay. Yeah, and uh, of course, if something is broken, then uh, you know yeah, they cannot cook uh, for so many people anymore. No. And they have to use the capacity of what is still working, yeah. which makes them get bro broken very soon. So what about something here breaks? What if today this one is broken? Sarah, it's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. If something breaks, it's a disaster. Mm -hmm. Because the 450 people depend on this kitchen. Mm -hmm. 
400. It's elderly people, uh, children, uh, boys school, girls school, and if something gets broken, then elderly people uh, stay without meal mm -hmm. and they cannot b uh, cook for themselves. There is nobody to come to help them a lot, uh, for a lot of them, mm -hmm. uh, for many of them. So children, they have to have uh, meals every day. Guaranteed. Uh, guaranteed. Yeah, so yeah. if something gets broken, everything stops. Yeah. En weet je, dat toont ook aan hoe belangrijk het is om deze keuken te renoveren. Deze mensen werken zo ontzettend hard hier. De apparatuur die ze hebben werkt een beetje, werkt soms wel, werkt soms niet. Maar er is echt keiharde behoefte aan nieuwe apparatuur. Dingen die goed werken, zodat de maaltijden die hier worden klaargemaakt, die 450 maaltijden per dag, dat die gewoon beter zijn voor de kinderen. Dat de ouderen beter voeding hebben, dat de kinderen voedzame maaltijden hebben, dat ze nog beter verzorgd worden door Tikva hier in Odessa. Dit was de realiteit in februari. Nauwelijks een maand later brak de coronacrisis uit. De voedselprijzen stegen en de ouderen raakten volledig afhankelijk van deze keuken. Christen voor Israël heeft daarom de voedselvoorziening opgeschroefd en begon maaltijden aan huis te bezorgen omdat niemand het huis uit mocht. Wat is het dan belangrijk dat er goede apparatuur is en een gezonde werkomgeving? Helpt u mee om dat mogelijk te maken? U kunt ook doneren voor voedselpakketten. Eén pakket kost 10 euro. Hartelijk bedankt voor uw hulp. Achter elk verhaal van armoede schuilt een verhaal van pijn en verlies. De holocaust is 75 jaar geleden, maar werkt door in de volgende generaties. De herinnering blijft. Я пришла сюда вспомнить о том времени. Я вообще лисица на Светлана Алексеевна родилась в 1941 году в городе Калинине. И была, конечно, грудным ребенком, но моя мама мне всегда всю жизнь рассказывала о войне, о страшной войне, о страданиях людей, о как страдали все народы, особенно евреи. И мамочка моя была еврейка. Это боль такая, что вам не передать. И эта война забрала у меня, у меня, у моей семьи очень много. Погибла мамина сестра и мамин брат, разутерзаны были возле рва. Отец погиб мой в 1941 году, я крошкой осталась сиротой. Очень тяжело жили с мамой. И хочу вам сказать, что фашизм, война – это страшно. Чтобы вам не пришлось, не довелось этого пережить. И чтобы вы в будущем... Ну, вы будущее будете строить, чтобы был мир, чтобы никогда такое не повторилось, чтобы никогда не сжигали людей в камерах, никогда их не расстреливали во львов. За вами будущее ваше. Вы его строите так, чтобы это никогда не повторилось. По давней еврейской, давней еврейской традиции, мы, когда вспоминаем это горькое время и своих близких, мы должны положить камешек в память о усопших и помолиться за них.